This is Craig, and I'd like to talk about moddable games. I talk about moddable games a lot on my blog, but I'd like to talk about it in a video to demonstrate what I mean. Most moddable games don't have NPCs that you can mod, or they're very, very annoying to mod. For example, Skyrim has a lot of really great NPCs, and it's easy to add more NPCs, but changing their fundamental nature is very difficult. Uh, pardon the extremely loud block party in the background. Uh, if you can hear that, I apologize. The band is terrible, but they make up for it by being extremely loud. Anyhow, uh, in Skyrim, if I tried to modify the NPCs in a more uh, substantial way, the game wouldn't wouldn't really understand it, and it I'd have to work around a whole bunch of assumptions that the programmers made that uh, that are really difficult. So that's why you've got things like boss, uh, and you've got things like uh, more complicated modding tools that allow you to change out the characters uh, in a more complicated way. It's just all because the, the structure does not allow for modding the NPCs very well. This does. In this game you play a godling and you can make characters out of clay. You get some kind of heart piece, it can be anything, and then you put clay around it and you get a character. And the point of the game is to prevent those characters from turning back into clay, which they do as they get more stressed out. Everyone has a certain amount of stress that they undergo just as time passes, as you can see here, these two characters have now turned back into clay. If I want to prevent them from doing that, I have to reduce their stress. This chair here is a stand-in for something like a chair or a bed, and it will reduce their stress. So let's go ahead and assign one of them as the owner of this chair. You can see that not only is he not turning gray, but he's also performing a task. That's because the chair has behaviors attached to it. You can see there on the far right. Uh, well, it has a behavior. The NPCs inherit those behaviors, and the behaviors have a tiering system so that they take prominence at, at different times whenever they feel like they need to. It's just a voting system. In this case, a very simple one. So if you wanted to create a mod where the characters behave differently, you might attach that to a chair. You might uh, create a new kind of chair, and you can see that the chair degrades over time. In the final version, the chair would degrade gracefully over several you know, weeks or, or months, but this is all, all sped up. You can see that now that it's gone, he no longer has the behavior, and he no longer has the stress relief, so he's turning gray. The other half of the game is making them do things. So we can assign this task. Uh, this is an object representing a, ta representing a task, uh, maybe cutting wood or something. But performing a task raises their stress. So this guy is now performing a... Um, let's go ahead and pause this. And I will... Let's start, let's start it over. Make a rotation of velocity negative 5. There we go. So he's now performing the task attached to the fireplace because the fire has a much more high priority task. Uh, and in turn, the chair's task is being ignored because it doesn't ever come up. But in the changing world, it would come up quite a bit. He's turning gray because performing a task builds up your stress. Uh, so it's no longer quite enough stress relief at the moment. Unlike the chair, which would degrade over time, the fireplace or whatever task object you're using would actually get stronger over time and in fact would cause more and more stress as it gives you more and more resources. So it's always going to be a balancing act and you're always going to lose in the end, but that's the whole plan is you got to figure out how to make it last as long as you can. The whole point of this game is that this is super easy to mod. Let's say that you wanted to introduce a new kind of relationship. Um, so you want, you want these two guys to be buddies. And therefore, you can introduce something which they'll share, which would make them buddies. For example, you might have a, um, a pair of chairs, and you just put them right next to each other, like this. And then you assign one of them to person A and the other one to person B. And the chairs would automatically look for other chairs nearby, and for every chair nearby, they'd say, okay, well, those two are now buddies, and I will spawn another behavior for them, which will cause them to act like buddies. And whenever they're interacting with each other, I'll, the buddy behavior will take over their behavior, and they will be friendly with each other. So that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about here. It's very powerful and very easy to do. Moreover, if you want to change the fundamental nature of the NPCs, all you have to do is introduce a new item that is used as their heart. So if you wanted to create an NPC that could fly, you just take a feather, for example, create a new in-game in feather object, and if you use that as their heart, they can fly. I apologize if you can hear the block band in the background, but the block party is uh, going full swing, and I can't, can't stop them from being very, very noisy. Hopefully you won't be able to hear too much about that, because this is a, a mic that should block out some of that sound. We'll find out. 
Anyhow, um, as I was trying to say, the uh, this is a very moddable system, but it has the advantage of being moddable in Unity. So I could release this project to you in the wild, and you could open it up, and you could play with it all you want. But more importantly, you could put your mods right here in the game, and then you could press play, and you could test them, and then you could export them as a Unity asset pack. The actual compiled game that 900 million people would have on their, uh, yeah, yeah, 900 million would have on their computers, that wouldn't be openable in Unity. That would be a standard game, but it would understand the concept of Unity asset packs. It's very easy to do that. So I would be able to just load up any mods that have been put into the directory and put them in the game. And so creating a, a, a mod manager using that tool set would be quite easy. And it has this massive advantage of you can build it here in Unity. You could build it, you could change it, and you could hit play. That includes code, includes models, it includes behaviors, it includes anything you want. And that's a very powerful tool that no one's really taken advantage of yet. And I thought I'd bring it up here, and I thought, thought I'd talk about how you can integrate it into a game, and how you can create NPCs that can understand the concept of multiple, multiple behaviors, moddable behaviors. You got these basically buildable bricks of behaviors, and they get combined, and whichever brick takes precedence at any given time takes precedence at any given time. You can also have the brick understand the concept of a task and vote very, very highly to continue that task, whereas normally it would be voting very, very low priority. So that's the basic idea. If you understood it, let me know what you think. And if you didn't understand it, let me know where you lost, con where you lost the, the plot.